Hello my fellow Misfitians and welcome back to another video. So for this particular week, I am continuing my search and my journey to find a watercolor paper that suits my needs. So a couple of years back, I did a watercolor series where I basically compared a ton of different cold press watercolor papers. And I found basically two that I really, really liked, actually three that I liked, but um, one of them is hard to get now. So the two that I really liked at the very end of the whole basically competition that I put together was I really liked Arches cold press watercolor paper surprise surprise I mean that's pretty much everybody's favorite it's a, a staple among the watercolor community but I also really liked Fabriano's um cold press watercolor paper as well I felt like it performed really well the thing is my style or basically how I approach watercolor has changed a lot since that particular point and um, while I still love both of those papers, um, I mainly use Arches because it's just easy for me to get, but I also have a couple of Fabriano, the same brand, the same type, um, on hand. I have come to realize over the past year that I'm leaning more towards hot press watercolor paper um, rather than cold press. And it's because I am finding I really like doing detail work with pens as well as recently I've been really enjoying using like watercolor pencils as well as colored pencils. And what ends up happening with cold press paper is that you can see the texture of the paper when you're doing those fine detail elements in your painting. And I don't like that. I feel like it's a struggle. It's just not as easy as I would like it to be. So over the next couple of months, basically, I'm going to be doing papers one by one. I'm not going to do a full basically battle of the papers. First off, I don't have the energy to do that anymore. <laughs> when I first did that, that was pretty much a month project and I was doing so much filming and so much editing to get those done and really do it the way I wanted it to be done. I just do not have that energy. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to be doing is basically developed, I've developed basically a rating system of what I desire in a watercolor paper. And I'm going to just be playing around with different brands as well as different types of watercolor paper over the next couple of months here and there um and giving you my thoughts on what i think of that particular paper so a lot of you have given me suggestions i actually asked about this i would say probably a month or two ago on instagram as well as on youtube the community section um, make sure you pay attention to the community section as well as Instagram and hang on. Sorry about that. Pepper went a little bit berserk. So anyway, I asked all of you for different brands as well as just different types of watercolor paper that you would like me to try out over the next couple of months. And I purchased a lot of your suggestions over Black Friday. Basically, whenever I could get anything on sale or with a coupon, I purchased as many brands as possible. And currently I have 12 that were suggested by y'all, as well as I added a couple in that I was interested in as I was searching through <laughs> the different types of papers while I was adding them to my cart. This is one that none of y'all um, suggested, but I was just curious about. So I decided for this particular week that I would play around with Dick Blick's Premier 100% um, hot press watercolor paper. I was just curious about it. It was a cheaper option compared to some of the other options by other brands. And I was, like I said, curious. So I actually drew this particular drawing that I'm going to be painting on this paper today in my 
watercolor journal. I actually drew this drawing that I'm going to be painting today in my watercolor journal, but um, I didn't want to paint it in here because I know how this paper paints and I like it. I wanted to try this drawing on a new paper. Um, and in order to speed up the process, um, I decided to take this paper and I have a special printer that can paint, um, print on poster board as well as thicker type of cardboard papers. Do not put your watercolor paper in a standard printer. It will ruin it. So I'm putting that disclaimer out there, but I have a particular printer that I bought years ago, um, specifically for trying to do art prints and that particular printer can print on watercolor paper as well as cardboard paper, CDs, poster board. So this particular printer is made for printing on more difficult surfaces. So anyway, I wanted to speed this process up instead of tracing my drawing onto watercolor paper. I just wanted to print a sketch on my watercolor paper and then get right into it. So that is what I did. I took this particular piece of paper, um, printed on it my drawing that I did in Procreate, and then started basically drawing it again. The way I basically did this was I printed very, very lightly because I just wanted a basic sketch of the ink. Um, this ink is not water proof. So I knew if I painted over it and the ink was, um, darker, it would probably bleed. So I didn't want to mess with that. So what I did is I printed very, very light gray, and then I went over it with, um, just graphite pencil until I got my lines the way I wanted them again. And then I went directly into basically painting with ink as well as with watercolor. Now for this particular painting, I limited my palette for watercolor because I really wanted to see how this paper worked with just ink and watercolor and ink pens and colored pencils. So I wanted the least amount of supplies as possible, but still experimenting with the supplies that I would like to use in the future um, for more detailed paintings. And um, the colors basically that I used were, so I have a Daniel Smith Permanent Violet. One of y'all actually, actually suggested me picking this up and I did over Black Friday. Um, I got Quina, I always say this name wrong and everybody corrects me and I cannot remember it. Quina Cridone Gold. I'm, I know I'm still saying it wrong. In my head, I have said it wrong for so long that it's stuck in there. But um, this one I also used as well as Windsor Blue Red Shade. So those are the three colors that I used as well as um, pH ph martin's um black matte ink and i also use the schminky um gold i know i talked about how i love that color in my supplies video but it was so expensive well i wanted to push myself and use it more this year to try and just use it instead of it sitting on my shelf since i spent so much money on it so i decided to go ahead and use it for this particular painting and um, I also used the PH Martin's Bleed Proof White um, ink as well for this particular painting. So what are my thoughts on this particular paper? This particular paper I fought with so bad. So I hope you can see it in the video. I'm not quite sure if you can see it, but I fought with this paper really bad. So this paper is 100% cotton um, watercolor paper, which I usually prefer because it absorbs color really well. It absorbs water really well. It spreads it out. Um, but I found what the problem with this paper is since it was so absorbent, like it absorbed the color, 
um, it actually created blurring effects. So if I was doing wet on dry techniques with this particular painter and I wanted more of a um, sharp, distinct line, I was having a horrible hard time trying to get that. Um, I found that the color was becoming this kind of blurry effect. Um, if I really zoomed in close, I don't know if you could see it, but if I really zoomed in close, you could actually see little spindlies where the color was actually going between the fibers of the paper. To me, this paper almost felt like I was painting on homemade paper, like watercolor paper. I actually, um, I didn't personally take it, but one of my friends took a paper making class in college and they basically made their own fibers and their own paper and played around with homemade paper and then they painted on it with watercolor. Um, it felt the exact same way. I felt like I was painting on a homemade type of watercolor paper. Now, for my particular style, I don't want that. I want something that gives me a little bit more control. But I will say this, if you like to do more of the abstracty, loose kind of, what I think of is like loose street art with the ink lines or even um, just more of the colors mingling together and then you have that nice thick um, line work with ink um, as well as pencils or that type of stuff, I think this paper would really work well for you. Um, but for me, it wasn't really what I was looking for. So here is the final product. Um, you can see it really nicely that it just stands out. I feel like really, really well on camera. Um, I'll show you some close-ups over by the table, but my rating system for this, the tooth or basically the texture of the paper is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. Um, so I gave it five stars out of five stars. Basically it's very, very smooth, but at the same time it does, I feel like have a little bit of texture where it grabs the paint and the, especially ink pens, um, better than I feel like Arches hot press watercolor paper. Um, when I paint on Arches hot press watercolor paper, I feel like it almost has a smooth sheen to the top of it. I think it's the sizing that they put on top of it. Um, I feel like that one doesn't allow necessarily the ink or the paint to go into the paper as well as this one did. Um, so that's my rating for the texture of the tooth. The absorption on this paper, it took the color, like as soon as I put it down, even when it was a wet on wet technique, as soon as I put it down, it absorbed the color really well and it maintained the color. So the color didn't lighten that much. I felt like what I was seeing on the paper and what was happening in front of me um, is what it looked like when it was dry. So the absorption, I would give five out of five stars. It was really, really nice with color absorption and just getting that color on a first take or a first layer of a wash. The ease um, basically to paint was a three. Just like I said earlier, I really struggled with getting sharp edges with this just because the absorption power was so strong. It just felt like it bled into the paper. And then finally, the ink and details. Um, I felt like it was a four out of five stars for me. Basically, um, when I was doing ink lines and ink pens, I wanted something really sharp and really tiny and distinct, um, such as using my Micron 005 pen. Um, I noticed that when I was drawing on the paper, some of the lines were still bleeding. Um, and I don't really want that. <laughs> so if you want super finite lines, this particular paper might not necessarily be the option that you would want to go with. 
Um, but overall, I would give this paper a four out of five, maybe 3.75 um, out of five stars. It did really, really well for a hot press paper. I was very impressed, but for me, it didn't quite fit what I was looking for. So um, what I did, and I wanna show you guys, if you're ever exploring different supplies, specifically paper, and you want to put notes um, next to your painting, but you don't wanna ruin your painting, like just in case you wanna use it again or frame it or something in the future. I found these transparent um, post-it notes on Amazon. I'll make sure to link them down below. But basically I just stick one of these right next to the painting and it comes up really easy. It doesn't leave sticky residue. They're awesome. Um, but I just take a micron pen and then put my thoughts down of what I found while I was painting on the paper so that I remember it for the future. And I put down the name of the paper and basically the specifics of that particular paper that I was painting on, such as this one was hot press and it was 140 um, pound weight. Uh, so anyway, I went ahead and just jotted all of that down. Another thing that I will say I'm going to be adding is um, the availability of the paper. So for this particular paper, there are other um, weights. There's 300 pound weight as well as different sizes that you can buy. I'm going to use that also as a um, rating system. And this one would be five out of five stars because there are different options for you if you want to explore different weights as well as different sizes. Um, some brands don't do that. They only come in one particular size and one particular material, such as one thing that I, I'm thinking of is um, watercolor journals. Some papers only come in a watercolor journal. So if you really like that paper, you can only get it in a watercolor journal. You can't buy such as packs of it or blocks of it. So I'll keep that in mind for the future as well. But anyway, um, those are kind of my thoughts and that's what the final product came out for this particular week. I hope you enjoyed that. It was just kind of what I did this week um, with my exploratory stuff. And um, yeah, so those are my thoughts on that particular paper. I will be sharing more um, paper types and brands and stuff in the future, as well as just processing and stuff like that um, with paintings and whatnot. So anyway, lots of love y'all. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye.